we're going to start with freestyle curve piecing and it's a very very useful tool and that's what these all of these things that I'm doing today really are is they're new tools for you to put in your toolbox to use to design your own quilts with or to make changes to the quilts that you already have designs for the freestyle curve um, a lot of people are afraid of doing curve piecing and there are all kinds of new tools out there on the market to help you with it um, I'm kind of a um, minimalist when it comes to all those tools. I feel like I have everything I need with my rotary cutter, my sewing machine, and a few pins. So we're just going to do it kind of freestyle with no extra help from any other tools. And we're going to get this wonderful, nice, tight curves, um, and they're going to be so easy, and you're going to start using these all the time. What I need to know about um, the curves that I'm sewing is how they're going to be used. And this is going to be used as a border. So I'm going to start with um, two pieces of fabric that are the length of the border plus a little bit and the width of the finished border. So my finished border is going to be three inches wide. So I've got two pieces of fabric that are cut three inches wide and they're the same exact length. Being the same exact length is important because that helps you match everything up when you're doing your pinning. Now I, I want my um, curves to be relatively deep but not really really tight and deep and so I'm going to overlap my two fabrics right side up both of them now these are both hand eyes so they don't really have a right or back side but sometimes you'll be using something other than a hand eye and you'll be happy to remember that both fabrics need to be right side up so they're overlapped and they're lined up at the at each end once that's done I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to gently start doing a curve. And you're going to see that as I cut the curve, the fabric is going to start to creep forward. And to keep it laying flat, I have to kind of pull at this far away end so that it doesn't double back up on itself. So we're just going to start with, and I have to keep my cut so that it's no deeper than this one and a half inches or so that I've overlapped the fabric. So that's the important thing. Now I can feel where that other fabric is underneath this fabric, so that gives me an idea of how deep I can cut this. So I'm just going to do some gentle curves. And as the fabric starts to creep, you can see that I'm just kind of controlling it with my left hand. And there we go. So it's that easy. I'm going to remove this top portion of the blue and come in here and remove the bottom portion of the green. And now you can see how perfectly those two fit together. Now I like to put little hatch marks in along the curves so that when I turn these over and start piecing them together, I know that I'm matching them up exactly. I don't mark with a uh, marking tool or a pencil or anything like that because I'll be marking on this side and I won't be able to see it when I turn it over. But if I mark a crease in it, I can see it when I turn it over. So I'm going to be using my seam ripper to just mark a little crease here and there that I can then use to line up the fabrics when I turn them over on top of each other. Because I'll be able to see that crease from both sides of the fabric. Now, some people like to just put a few pins in. I'm a pinner when it comes to this sort of thing. Not with other things, but definitely with this. So I'm going to put a pin everywhere that there is a hatch mark first, and then I'll go in between and probably put some more pins in. And I think the pinning probably takes the longest in the whole process, but it's well worth it when you end up with a really nice curved piece. Whoops, I have lost sight of my marks, so I'm going to come back over here to this end and make sure that I've got them in the right place. And
And you can tell if everything's in the right place by whether or not it kind of moves into the curve when you give it a bit of a stretch. Okay, so now I'm going to pin in between and then we'll start sewing. And when I pin in between, you can see that I'm rolling the fabrics one way or the other so that we can line up the raw edges. Okay, so now we're ready to sew. And you want to just use a regular seam allowance that you would normally use, quarter inch, if that's what you like to do. Remember, this is your pattern, so you can pretty much do whatever you want to do. Now, as I get going, I am always put my needle in the needle down position so it will hold its place when I have to do any adjusting along the way. And I really pay close attention to make sure I am not getting any pleats. And I look at the back also, again checking for pleats. Okay, so we'll take our pins. Now I do not clip the seams. There's really no need for that. And remember that if you have hand dyed or batik fabrics, that they don't like to stretch nearly as much as other quilting fabrics do. So we're just gonna turn our mat over so that we can iron this. And I'm simply going to press it to the darker color, which is my blue, push it over, and I want the seam to go all the way over to one side. I'm not going to open it up or anything. So we're just going to press that seam all the way over to the darker fabric. And again, I'm really glad that my piece is a little wider than I need it to be because I can always trim it down but I, of course I can't grow it if I've made it too narrow. And so this way I've got plenty of room to play with. We'll go ahead and just set that on the wall with the rest of our pieces. And now we can move on to the X blocks. For the X blocks, and remember those are the little ones, these are our small three inch blocks here, and they are not pieced on the back. They are actually top stitched on the surface. So we're going to start with a background that is the actual size we need it to be. So it's the finished size plus a half inch. And then we're going to have a few strips, and these strips could be the same color or they could be two different colors, it's up to you. I tend to work with strips that are about an inch wide, but you could go wider too, and you could even go narrower. What we're going to be doing is we're going to stitch them down, flip them over to cover the seam allowance, and then flip them over again, and then we're going to top stitch. So we'll have to change our thread. So I've chosen a thread color that pretty much goes with all the colors that I'm using right now. So we'll go ahead and stitch on our first strip. 
And I can put that at any angle I want. And I don't want it to be perfect looking, I want it to be funky looking. So I can just set it at some sort of angle. And then I'm just going to use the raw edge of my strip as my guide for my stitching. And again, I'll use a quarter inch seam allowance. Now I'm going to be doing top stitching next, so I'm going to go ahead and change my thread out real quick so that I don't forget to do that. I'll keep the same thread in the bobbin. It'll be on the back side of the block and it won't show. Okay. All right, so now what I want to do is I want to turn this over, but I want to make sure I have no raw edges. So I'm going to fold the raw edge up to the seam that I just sewed and do a little bit of a finger press and then fold the whole thing over and then iron. It's just so easy and it yields such a nice block. So now I'm simply going to top stitch right along this edge that's not stitched down. And if you've never top stitched before, generally you can use the inside edge of your foot and line that up right along with the, the edge that you're stitching and it's going to give you a nice top stitch. So there's our first leg of our X. And you can see that the top stitching is just right along that edge. So now I'm going to set my next strip down. And I, again, I want this to be funky, so I'm not going to do it perfectly across so that it ends up with a really tidy X. I want it to be a weird X. So I'm going to sort of offset it here. So again, I'm going to fold over that raw edge to the seam and then fold it over again. Now you want to make sure that you're folding it over in such a way that it's going to cover up the raw edge of the opposite side of the strip. So there we go. And now we just top stitch and we'll be done. Now at this point I top stitch all of the sides. So I'm doing the side of the one I just sewed on and then I'll do the side that is where it's sewn on to the fabric so that all four sides or the two sides of each strip have top stitching on them. Okay, so there's our block, and now all I have to do is cut off the excess, and you can use your rotary cutter or scissors. Get rid of all my threads at the same time. And there's our X block. See how fun and easy that is? Nice and tidy on the back and ready to go. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the square and a square. Now this block takes a little bit longer than the others. 
and I'm going to kind of run you through it. Here you see a couple of them. And this first one here, it has a center square, a first round, and a second round. When I got that second round on, it was large enough. I only needed them to be four and a half inches. But these weren't large enough with that second round, so I added a third round. So there's the center, the first round, the second round, and the third round. I start with something sort of square in the center, and it doesn't have to be square, but somewhere near square is good. And then I had some scraps left over from piecing some of the stars that I pieced earlier, so I'm going to use those first. And I'm simply going to show you here how this is going to work. So these are going to go around, but instead of putting them on square, we're going to put them on at angles. And then we're going to have these. And then after these are sewn on, we'll square it up real quickly, and then we're going to add these on. Opposite sides, and then here, and I think I need to find another one, and then we'll finish with these. So remember, we're going to be working at funky angles. Now, it's, it's funny, I'm a, I'm a pinner when it comes to things trying to be really kind of, I don't want to use the word exact because that's not really it, but just really precise and neat. Um, but otherwise, I don't pin, and I'm not much of an irony, ironer either. I do a lot of finger pressing, so that's what we're going to do in between is finger pressing. So I'm going to put my first side on at a weird angle. Oh, let's change this thread real fast. We don't need that decorative thread. Okay, so I've got my first piece at an angle. And I'm going to clip the thread off, clip the excess in the seam allowance here, and flip it over and finger press. Now I'm going to sew on the opposite side. And this is going to look like nothing while you're making it. You're just going to be flabbergasted as to how it's going to turn into a square, but trust me, it will. So this is going on at a different angle. And again, we're going to trim that seam allowance. And finger press. Okay, so now I have two opposite sides on, and it's time to put the remaining two sides on. And again, I'm putting it on at an angle instead of straight on the center square. Now, all of this excess needs to be cut off. So anything that's to the right of the seam allowance needs to go. Otherwise, it's just going to end up really bulky underneath the block. So now I'll flip that over and finger press. And you can see when I finger press, I start in the middle and work in both directions. That's the best way to get a nice tight finger press. And our last side here, and I have the opportunity here to really increase the angle one way or the other on the center. So I'm going to do it now. And cut off that excess. And finger press again. Okay. So that's our first round. Now as we come back here to
to the table. I'm going to go ahead and press that real quick. And I can cut this to, into a square sort of by scissors or by with a rotary cutter and I'm just going to do it with scissors. So now it's ready for its next round. I happen to think that I can probably cut one of these in half and it'll be pretty big since I can't seem to find my fourth piece. Okay, so we're going to sew this all the way around now to do the second round. Again, cutting that seam so that we don't have all that excess. Finger press and opposite side. At an angle, always an angle. Now, if I'm doing a whole lot of these, I will string piece. I'll put the first piece on all the centers, then do all the trimming, then do the finger pressing as I go to add the second piece onto all the centers, and so on. So as we're looking at this, we can see where our angles are. This one's angling down, and so we probably don't want this one to angle down. We probably want it to angle the opposite direction. And that's about what we'll get, so that's nice. Again, at an angle. Okay. Trim that seam allowance and then press it and do our final go around. Now, when you're thinking about making these square and squares, if you have an idea of what size you want that square to be, when it's finished, you want to start with a center square that's about a third the size of the finished square. So if your square is going to be six inches, start with a center square that's two. And then you're going to have rectangles, or tri uh, excuse me, squares, that you'll cut in half into triangles. And those squares should be the same, the first round should be the same size as the center. So if your center's two inches, cut two more two inch uh, squares, and they don't have to be exact, so you can rip if you want to, or just use scraps. And then cut those squares in half, and that will yield the four triangles you need for the outside. Then the next square is going to be an inch bigger than the last square and then cut them in half to, to yield triangles again. And then the final round will be an inch bigger than the previous square. So for this block, I would have a two inch square in the middle, two inch squares for the first round of triangles, three inch squares for the second round of triangles, and four inch squares for the final round of triangles. And those are just guesstimates. They're quite a bit large. And again, you are going to waste some fabric. But again, I think it's worth it for these wonderful funky blocks. So I'm going to trim this to somewhat square again. and add my final round. Now you'll notice when I go to lay these triangles down that I try to keep the point, the short point of the triangle near the center of the block. If I come way over here and the point is way off to one side, then when I'm finished I'm going to have a very funky shaped block that's probably going to be long rather than squarish and it may not be the size I need it to be. So when I lay this down I try to keep that center somewhere near the center of the block. And again, I want to lay it down at an angle.
trim my seam allowance. Finger press. Now if we were making a traditional square and a square, we would look at this little corner being cut off of this, the previous square and we'd think that's a mistake. It's not a mistake when you're free, free um, style piecing. Free style piecing, anything goes. And it's not a mistake if you say it's not a mistake. So you get to do whatever you want to do. So I'm going to do the opposite side here at a different angle. And trim seam allowance away. And finger press. Okay, last two sides. Cut away everything that's to the right of the seam allowance. And you don't have to go to the rotary cutter to do that. It doesn't have to be a perfect seam allowance. Finger press. Now I look at this and I can determine how I want my last angle to be. If I want it to go this direction or that direction. This previous one is going in that direction so I think I want this one to go in the opposite direction. Get every rid of everything that's to the right of the seam allowance. And we're ready to press and then to trim it to its actual size. And that's a great looking block. So I'll turn this over. Now, when it comes to trimming it to its size, one of the things that I'll do is my size for this trim is four and a half inches. And I'm going to use this ruler here and I'm going to use the corner. You can see how well used my rulers are here. And what I need to know is that what is the middle of four and a half? And the middle of four and a half or the half of four and a half is two and a quarter. And so I've put a little black dot right here at the intersection of two and a quarter. And if that dot is somewhere near the middle of my block, then I know that I'm going to get an even cut all the way around. So I'm going to put that somewhere near the middle of my block. Now as I'm doing that, I'm going to move the ruler in different directions so that I can make sure that I'm going to be able to get four and a half inches everywhere. So I might have to change the block into different directions so that I can get that four and a half inches. So here we go. Well, I can get four and a half inches, but my dot's nowhere near the center. Huh, I don't care. Again, this is freestyle piecing. So I've trimmed two sides. I'm going to turn those two sides around, and I'm going to put the two trimmed, or the corner of the trimmed, in the intersection of four and a half. And then I can trim the other two sides. Now as I'm doing this, I'm seeing that I'm way too far over here. So I'm going to retrim this side after I've trimmed this side. And I'm going to move this out. Go back to trimming again on the first two sides. That intersection at four and a half. There and there. And now my dot is right there in the center. So I just must have had it offset before. And there we go. There's one of our wonderful square in a square in a square in a square blocks. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and piece our fabulous funky stars. Remember that these stars are based on the Ohio star. And it's a star that has eight star tips in it. We have background squares. There are eight of those also. 
and then we have a center square. Now, when it comes to figuring out the sizes for cutting for these squares, all you have to understand is that the square is basically a nine patch. That means that it has nine units, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, that are all the same size. Now the units may be doing different things, but they're all the same size, so it's a nine patch. We want to be able to choose a finished size for the block that can be easily divided into nine. So I probably wouldn't want to go with a five inch block or a seven inch block because nine does not divide evenly into those really well so that we can get a number that's easy to cut. Whereas six and nine go very well. If we put three, because there's three squares, divided into six, we get two. That means that each square is going to finish at two inches and that's what we're working with. To all of these finished sizes, you add a half inch so that you have a quarter inch seam allowance around all sides. So I'm gonna cut eight background squares that are two and a half inches and that's what I've got here. Now my center square is going to be the exact same size and that's what this one is for. And then I'm simply gonna cut some strips or a strip of fabric that's the same width and that's what I'll use for the star tips. So let's go ahead and start piecing those tips. Now four of these backgrounds don't get pieced and four do. And I'm going to string piece. That means that I'm going to push through one side of each of the backgrounds with one star tip on each of them. And what I need to know is approximately where the middle of the block is. And this just helps me to kind of place things in a way that is going to be um, attractive when I'm done. So I want to make sure that when I lay down my fabric for my star tip, and my star tip is going to be on this side when it's flipped over, and it can be at any number of angles, big wide angles, tall thin angles, but I want to make sure that I'm getting somewhere near the middle on the bottom portion of this block. So I can start anywhere I want to on the top. I can start on this side, or I can start along the top of the square, but I want to kind of finish somewhere around this halfway mark on the bottom of the square. So I'm going to make this one be somewhat short and somewhat fat. Again, I'm going to use the raw edge of my top fabric as my seam guide, and I'm going to use approximately a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm just going to let that string through. Take another background. This one, I'm going to do a long, thin point or stip tip on this one. And so I try to do each one slightly differently so that my star tips will all look different from each other. But unfortunately, when it comes down to it, there just aren't that many different angles you can use on a little two and a half inch square. Now the trick to making these fit together look and look really nice is to not trim your seam allowances until after you've trimmed the unit. So I'm going to leave the seam allowance there. I'm not going to cut this away, but I am going to flip the fabric over and finger press. Now my other side, needs to cross over along the bottom edge of the block the first side. So when I'm done, I want something that looks something like this. So I want to make sure that when I set my fabric down, this top blue fabric, that it crosses over this bottom blue fabric.
Okay, so those are done. And I'm going to go ahead and finger press them again. So I have these four somewhat messy looking units. And I could go to my cutting board and use my rotary cutter to cut these out perfectly, but it, I think it's a lot faster to simply use your scissors. So I'm just going to use the edge of that background fabric to cut away all the excess of the star fabric. So this is what it's going to yield on the front. But I also want to get rid of that seam allowance that's back there. So I'm going to at this time, cut away the seam allowance. Now one side cuts all the way off, but the other one has a Y seam through it, so you have to cut it sort of in the shape of a Y. You could always leave the seam allowances if you want to, but it does make the machine quilting a little bit more difficult um, if you have all those extra layers to go through, and even more difficult if you're going to hand quilt. Okay, so now I'm ready to piece my star together. So I'm going to bring it here and just set it on the tables for you to see. We have our four corners. Our center square. And then each of our star tip sections. like so. So we'll just sew them together in rows and then sew those rows together. Finish up the rows.
Okay, so now I know that a lot of you are ready to head over to the ironing board now, but I don't like to iron my blocks while they're in rows. I don't iron until I'm done with the whole block. I feel like it um, makes the block actually get misshapen the more you iron it. So I try to iron it as little as possible. So I'm simply going to turn the seams so that they butt into each other. So here's the bottom row. And naturally, the bottom row, the two side pieces want to come out this way so that the seams are going in that direction. In the center, it's the opposite because there's all this bulk in here. It's trying to go in. So I'm going to have it do exactly what it thinks it needs to do. And I'm just going to butt those seams up, turn one in one direction and one the other, and place a pin there. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm the boss of my fabric. I'm the boss of my sewing machine. I'm the boss of everything when I'm in my studio. It's the only place I'm the boss of it. Um, and so I make sure that my blocks match up. If I have to ease or pull or do whatever I have to do, I want to make sure that my blocks are square when I'm done and not have to waste time squaring them up or having to reshape them or anything. And again, that center is moving in on this row, and the new row is the seams are moving out. And we'll butt up again and lay flat and pin. Now the pins that I use are ultra fine silk pins. So you probably see that I'm sewing right over them, and some of you are freaking out about that too. Um, these are so fine that even if I hit them with my needle, uh, it won't break the needle. It might break the pin, but it won't break the needle. And I've always thought, what's the sense of pinning something if you have to remove the pin before you get to it? So I do so right over those things. So our block is done. There we go, and we're ready to press it. So we'll turn this over. And you can see from the back that this is already moving in. These are already moving out because of the way we sewed them. And you can see that this wants to move in. So I'm going to have it do what it wants to do because that means that there's less bulk in the direction that it's moving towards. So I'm going to press lightly from the back to get that seam moving in the direction that it's supposed to move in and press lightly from the back on this side and then I'll press it from the front. Now I'm one of those people who tries not to move the iron when it's down because that becomes ironing instead of pressing. So here I can see that I have a little bit of a um, uh, pleat. I'll just iron that out, and we're done. So we have this wonderful, wonderful star block, and it's really easy to make and really fun, and we have all these really different, funky-looking little star tips, and the block is so interesting. So we have just one more thing we're going to piece, and then I'll show you what the rest of this looks like up on the wall. So you remember earlier I was showing you this really fun, high contrast, bright kind of fluorescent yellow with white. And these are strips that are cut at angles. So you'll see that at one end, all the whites are narrower and one end they're wider. And on this end, all the neon yellows are wider and on this end they're narrower. So when I cut these fabrics, I layered them on top of each other and I simply cut them at angles. And so you can see here that these two nestled into each other, like so, when they were com coming off of the yardage. What I do is I make sure that my narrow end is never narrower than three quarters of an inch. This is important because if you have a quarter inch seam allowance on one side and a quarter inch seam allowance on the other side, you are going to eat up 
half of that three quarters of an inch and you'll just yield a quarter inch finished on the front. And then I try not to get wider than about, oh, maybe an inch and three quarters to two inches on the wide side. Otherwise, it becomes too chunky on the wide side. So I'll just sew one of these on, and then we'll cut this so that it fits our quilt, and we can see what it looks like inserted in there. So the next thing I'm going to need here, I have wide white, and I have thin white over here. So I'm going to put thick yellow and thin white. And no pinning here. You're just going to lay it on there. We don't really care if it matches up on the ends because we're going to be making this bigger than we need it to be so that we can trim it to all the various sizes that we're going to use it for. We're essentially making strata or a striped fabric. And we'll just flip this over and press it. We want all the seams to be going in one direction. This is one of those new irons that likes to make weird noises. Okay, so we have our new strip sewn on and this is ready now to cut to put into some of our blank spots on our quilt on the design wall. So to do that, we need to know where it's going to go and how big it needs to be. So we're going to go back to our original design that we did. And we're going to be putting some in right here, here, and here. Well, we need to know how big all of these things are. This one's pretty simple because this is a 6-inch finished star and a 3-inch finished strip here. So we know that it's 9 inches finished. That means it's going to be cut nine and a half inches long. Here we have a four inch square, and this is half of that four inch square. So that's two inches wide. And we have to add that half inch, so it's two and a half inches. So we're going to cut a unit that's two and a half inches by nine and a half inches. My first thing that I have to do is either find something on this unit that is already true or square or cut something that's true or square. Now I'm the type of person who's going to say, well, I'm going to make something true or square. And let's see if I can do it just by laying it on there. Probably not because I'm going to lose a lot of fabric there. So we'll go ahead and just set it on here. And I'm going to move it over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece that is going to be wide enough for my two and a half. I'm just going to cut it off the edge here and make one straight edge. So here's my straight edge now. So I know that this side is true and now I need this to be two and a half inches wide and I don't measure off the, the mat, I usually just measure off the ruler. So while I'm here I'm going to edge this down and I'm going to go ahead and true up this end also. And now I just need to measure nine and a half inches. And that's going to be right there. Now, as I look at this, nine and a half inches is going to be right here. I'm going to lose the whole portion of this little bit of lime green, this yellowy lime color here. So I'm actually going to push this over just a bit, and then I'll cut over off a little bit of excess down here also. It's just going to be yield a more attractive end result. Okay, so let's put this guy in place. He's going to go right in there. Now, you can see as soon as I put it in there that it makes everything really, really lively. So now I can't wait to see what this one on top looks like. 
and it, here we have a four inch square, so we know it's going to be four inches long. And this is a four inch square, and we're using three inches of that square. We know that because these are three inches, and it's just kind of how the math goes together. So we're going to cut something, we have to add that seam allowance. So three and a half inches by four and a half inches. Now, in this bottom area, the stripes are going from top to bottom. Here I want the stripes to go side to side. So again, I know that this side that I cut off is true, so I can use it as the true area. And I'm going to cut off a piece that is bigger than the four and a half by three and a half. I'm going to make it three and a half inches wide. So I'll be cutting here and here. But I've given myself about five inches here so I can cut off that length wherever I want to. And remember, this strata is just like a piece of fabric. So we'll turn that over. And now we're going to measure our four and a half inches, which is right there. Now, again, we're in the same position. If I cut right here, I'll lose that whole section of white. It'll get pieced into the seam allowance. And I really like that skinny section of white. So I'm actually going to move this down more than a quarter of an inch past that white so that we see the white. And I'll trim that. And then we'll remeasure again for that four and a half. I'll turn it around, find my four and a half again. Now here I'm going to end with white also, but this is a really wide white, so it's not going to all get lost. And that will go there. So this is going to go in this area. And again, instant perk up. I'm really liking that. It's drawing this border piece is really close in, and it makes it look really nice. So our last little piece is this guy here. And it is, we've got a three inch square and a one inch strip, so that's four inches by one inch. So we're going to cut it four and a half by one and a half. So I'm just going to cut where I already cut before. and get that four and a half inches. There we go. So that's looking really cool. So I'm going to run and grab my fabrics real quick, and we'll choose the fabrics that we're going to use in some of the negative spaces that are left in the border, and then we'll be done. <laughs> 